Hello, everybody. Welcome to Most Wanted Topics. I'm your host, Kevin Dennison, along with me, Atomic Tommy. What is going on? Not much. Not Boy, a did we, did been, we, a, been a weekend. We had a great weekend. You know what? The people from New Pain was here. It was New Pain Day on the 11th, and boy, they showed up. We had uh, we had a lot of positive feedback. A lot of people came out to meet these guys, what they're doing. A lot of people know they're local. Um, uh, well, there's a bunch of people locally here in Minnesota. Uh, Key Champagne obviously does not live in Minnesota, but came out here for the big event, uh, the head of New Pain. Um and then these guys have been involved in, in the big leagues. These guys have been with the majors for, I mean, Keith alone, 30 years yep. in the business with Marvel and DC and Dark Horse. Tom, same thing, 30 years in the business almost uh, with the uh, same thing, Marvel and DC doing work in some of the independents. Um, they're putting out great work, and now they're moving on with it with a new direction in their world, and it's called New Pain, and they have a bunch of new characters. They have a bunch of new titles. I hate things, which is kind of a historical piece on Hastings, Minnesota, and kind of the racism that affected that town. Uh, so if you want to read about that, that, that's a pretty cool story. Daybreak was in our March brackets. If you remember, Daybreak was in our March bracket uh, event. So that that's a four-issue series that came out under New Pain, and that's pretty good. So there's a there's a couple, there's a few titles out right now that they have. And uh, we want to want you to get to know these guys. So we did a nice interview with them, and you did a great job. And Thank we're going to play that for everybody here shortly. But before we get to that interview, we have to talk, take care of some business because we promised people about the energy universe yeah uh we're, we'll let let's get through some of the other books i'll talk about first and we'll talk about energy universe last because i think that'll just take it's gonna be a little bit longer of a spiel uh but i do have besides the energy universe special i have one more book i want to talk about this week and that's giant size x-men number one uh you know i i'm a really big fan of the, the fact that they're bringing back the giant size titles i think that's really fun i think they're really expensive but I think it's really fun, oh, oh, just a way to get some extra stories out there in, in sort of a classic format, giant size title. The giant size title has been around since, you know, 70s, that, that era. Uh, so it's been around for a long time, and I really like that they're bringing that back. And this was a really fun read. It was a fun angel story. It, you know, a classic X-Men character brought in a more character-focused, narrative-driven story. I think that's really fun. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that as we go forward in the giant size titles specifically uh, with X-Men, I think, you know, as we get sort of a new take on the arcade and murder world type character and story uh, with sort of a new character, Maze. I'm not going to give anything away, but it's in a little bit of a different spin on that. Same kind of concept, but a little bit of a different execution on that. Uh, and I think we're just going to get a lot more character-focused X-Men stories, I think is really cool. Uh, so I really like Giant Size X-Men. Check that out. But uh, let's talk about the Iron John Universe. Last week, uh, I mentioned that obviously there was an Iron John Universe special releasing this week, or last week, I guess now, and it looks strikingly similar to the Free Comic Book Day one, which released on Free Comic Book Day. I wasn't sure if they were the same at that point, but after further review and inspection and investigation, we have such come to the conclusion that panel for panel, page for page, they are the same book. Uh, which I personally take a little bit of an issue with. How about, you know, I, I don't know if you feel the same. I'm not way. a fan of that, putting out the same work twice in a row like that. Yeah, like I, close together. I, I, look, I think it would be a little bit different if they released it, you know, four or five months later, re-released it. I don't think that would, I think that'd be a little bit, di a little bit different. But taking something that you released for free and immediately re-releasing it, not even a week later for $3.99, uh, I think is just a little scummy. I think it's a bit of a scumbag move. Uh, one, it's an insult to the completionists, the people who want to complete the Energon universe, get every book, every every title. Uh, you know, you're making them buy the same book, you know, that they got for free with a different cover. You're, you're essentially making people pay for a cover, which I think in alone is a problem. Uh, they're just, you know, and it's just, it's just not cool. Uh, I wouldn't, I don't know. It's just, ugh. you know, it just doesn't sit right. No, it, it, that I'm, you said it all. I can't add any more to that. I'm, I agree with you, one hundred percent. You shouldn't put out twice like that. That that's kind of a bogus move. And, and I, you know, there's there's more to say about it for sure. But you know, we don't need to go into a whole thing. I just wanted to mention it. You know, we we told you guys we talked about it last week. I wanted to I wanted to bring it up. I wanted to give a brief little take. Uh, there's more to say, but I don't think we're gonna say it. So, uh, with that, let's talk about what's coming up this week. 
Uh, how about Doom number one, a new Doctor Doom story? Everybody loves Doom. You love Doom. I love Doom. He loves Doom. Everybody loves Doom. So we're going to give Doom a read. Uh, how about G.I. Joe number 306, our good friend Paul Peltier? Shout out to Paul Peltier, art. everybody. We love Paul Peltier. Great artist. We're going to get him here for a sign in the store, hopefully pretty soon. And uh, we're glad to see him back in the game. I mean, he is such a great artist. I mean, he's 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 amazing. He's talented. He's a veteran in the industry. And well, he's on G.I. Joe right now, and that's amazing. Uh, how about Master of the Universe Revelations number one with some work done by our good buddy Keith Champagne, who you'll yep. hear from in just a minute. Yep, Keith Champagne also had a new paint. So, uh, yeah, that that's pretty cool that Keith yeah. Champagne also worked on that one. So a lot of just great talent all around. A lot of great stuff. So anything else coming out we have to look forward to? That's it. Let's get yeah, – people are excited to see – uh, what happened this weekend? So people got to meet New Pain. Now you're going to get a chance to meet New Pain if you weren't weren't able to come to the store. Now here's your chance to meet him. Atomic Tommy's uh, hosting the interview. So enjoy everybody. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this interview. All right, this is a very special segment here on the episode. We I'm joined here with the New Pain crew, Key Champagne, Hi. all the way to the left, Tom Nguyen Hi. and Rob Miller, all legends in their own right. Uh, let's let's just do some introductions here. Go down the line, you know, sort of who you are and what you do for New Pain. Uh, let's start with Rob. Uh, well, these guys brought me on to help finish up the Switch, um, eighty plus page book. Um, they needed a guy to just to fill in some colors. I'm the colorist. Absolutely, you know, and, and you do an amazing job. You're a great Thank color. You. you you know, always providing those extra details. I love that. Get some special effects, you know, add some to the story if I can once in a while. Yeah, you know, always important. Tom, how about you? Well, well Rob's cutting himself short because he's also a, an accomplished artist. And, uh, you know, he's done some artwork, you know, not just colors. So. Well, thank you. But, uh, so I'm Tom. I am a comic book veteran of 27 or 28 years. Um, mostly with DC Comics, some Marvel, and then, uh, you know, some other publishers as well. But, uh, yeah, uh, Keith and I uh, decided to make New Pain Comics. That's our little publishing venture. And uh, so I guess I would be the artist co-publisher, and Keith is the co-publisher and writer and artist as well. So, Keith? Uh, I think Rob is still selling himself short because he also handles... Uh, like all the videos for our campaigns. I mean, he basically is talented in, in so many different directions, whether it's, you know, digital artwork, traditional artwork, video work, uh, sound work. He's a handsome mother effer. Like, he, the guy's got it all going on for him, but he has no self-esteem. He yeah. represents no New Pain very well, and he's the glue that holds us together. Like, Rob's the guy. We want to dress him up in a costume at a convention and have him cosplay our characters because he looks like a superhero. He God just doesn't bless realize you guys. It. Are you trying to make me cry? <laughs> Too late. So he's the he's the mascot. He's he's, he's the face I'm of the, the operation. Mascot. I'm gonna be he's Steve Pain Jobs. Yeah. He's the <laughs> like Rob's the guy. Like literally, like if I can't figure out how to do something, then I'll text Rob, and like he just knows how to do everything. Then I put it in Chat GPT and I have the. <laughs> yeah, I mean that hey, modern times, oh, modern nice. solutions, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, let, before we dive a little bit more with Keith and Tom, I want I actually want to talk to Rob a little bit more. Okay. I feel like less people probably know you, so I think it's important. I'm in the hot seat. Yeah, you are. Uh, so, you know, besides, you know, we, Tom mentioned that you're also an artist. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I guess tell me a little bit more about that. Sort of what do you do besides the Switch, besides oh. stuff for New Pain? Um, well, I, I started out uh, doing caricatures at... Uh, Valley Fair, which is like a Six Flags, you know, in here, and uh, Mall of America when it was Camp Snoopy. Um, Tom actually uh, helped usher me into that because um, uh, he started training me. I was doing warehouse. I, I worked at a warehouse uh, for uh, MTS, this movie theater company. So I was in the movie business. We'll just say it like that. <laughs> you know, um, but then, yeah, Tom trained me like uh, before the, the next uh, season of Valley Fair. Uh, so I had a head start on all the other people who were learning how to do caricatures. And so then I got the job, and from there, you can kind of start building your career as a freelance artist because you're, you're in the public, so people ask you, you know, hey, I got an idea for a board game or, like, a, a toy or, you know, my own book or something. And that did lead me to a, a client that I, I still work for uh, today, um, 
this company, SDC, uh, Salon Development Corp. They, I illustrated two books for them, um, and I started doing animation and video stuff for them and just decided anytime they need something creative, I would help them and then other clients here and there. But, um, you know, basically, yeah, I owe Tom for, for telling me, you know, you could, you could do this for a living. So Yeah. Well, I just say to see talent wasted. So. <laughs> well, yeah, Plus, he's I, a friend, you know. Yeah, I think that's important. I think that's yeah. a great story, you know, a great bring up into the industry. Yeah, start somewhere and uh, just kind of keep at it. Yeah, uh, I guess a follow-up to that, you know, what what's your favorite? Era? I mean, you know, animation, drawing, all this stuff. What's sort of your, what's your favorite? Like, of everything you've done, because you've done a lot, yeah. what's your favorite? Well, I, I, I do the Venn diagram of, of you know, there's what's what you're good at what you like to do and what you can make money at. And where those three circles intersect has kind of led me to my new career path, which is uh, UI, UX design. I'm never going to give up doing drawing and illustration type stuff, but user interface, uh, user experience design, it, it focuses everything where I can uh, do my own project management, bring some art, uh, visual communication in there, and uh, do animations, uh, video production, kind of, puts all the skill set together and then, um, you know, do art uh, as a regular gig for fun. And if New Pain needs me to step up and, and create a promo video or color a book or whatever they need. I hate to interrupt, but I, I really think Rob is still selling himself <laughs> short <laughs> Still selling by, by leaving out probably his biggest national credit, which is oh, uh, artist on Big Brother for oh, yeah. CBS. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, with all this selling short, you know, some would have us believe that he's actually short, and he's actually the tall of all he's of us. He's the tall. tallest one here. Six so three. maybe you should start selling yourself taller. I'll okay, sell, myself taller. sell yourself taller. Yeah. I mean, at this point, <laughs> like, come on now, you know. Yeah, well, Big Brother, yeah, that, I, you know, Tom, I have to give him credit for they they were looking for artists, and you know, Tom gave my information, and, and they liked what I did. So I've been working on him for going on seven seasons now and you know it was uh bb comics uh also doing uh, pitch illustrations and and lately the last season was my busiest one of all doing um a lot of on-screen graphics um, for different games so um, yeah like photo manipulation stuff I, I like i really like doing that and um just helping gameplay and everything so yeah, that's amazing. You know, that's awesome. Again, a lot of stuff you have to credit to your name, you know. I got to stand taller. Got to stand I taller. Don't sell short. Stand you know, uh, moving over to, to Tom and Keith a little bit. Keith, we've had you on a few times now talking about New Pain, but Tom, you know, this is sort of a, a first for you here talking New Pain. I kind of want to get your take on some of the stuff, you know. Yeah. We've talked to Keith a little bit before about some of the big differences, you know, between, let's, you know, say working for like an independent publisher compared to one of the big two publishers and you know Keith's given his take but I want to hear yours on you know for you what what are some of the big differences being a veteran and you know working in the independent scene versus the pro scene oh the biggest difference is uh, you get no money in the independent scene <laughs> so uh, you know you're poor yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, the I think uh, the biggest difference is uh, editorial oversight for me um, and not having to just bend to the will of what the editors and what you know the, the corporate publisher wants and uh, you know not that I was ever really hassled too much I mean I understood what a, a job was to do their stories but it's quite a different feeling when you can literally write and draw whatever you want um, I'm not primarily a writer at all i'm primarily an artist but uh even uh, being not an to interrupt but i think tom is selling himself short, <laughs> selling short guy. Pattern, he is so the author of two different uh how to draw books that's true is it yeah absolutely two or three uh two um he's also a spelling bee champion from the fifth grade <laughs> spelling bee champion. that's true so he's got a lot going i'm very on modest about the that very <laughs> modest yeah. yeah keep humble i mean you know, you know i mean I literally was a placing away from going to the state, but you don't, don't, don't worry about that. You know, that was eons ago, but, um, but yeah, I mean, even as an artist, I mean, how many opportunities do comic book artists get to where literally the writer does not care what you draw? Doesn't it even care? I mean, I don't think I can get this with any other 
writer except for Keith because I can read a script and uh, I remember a couple times I might be bouncing ideas just going through the script and Keith will literally say do what you want I don't care (laughs) (laughs) this is not like Marvel or DC at all this is the total opposite of Marvel or DC not that I would take advantage of that you know uh, but um, just having that type of direction or lack of direction it's so different and refreshing it changes the way i you know it gives me more passion to draw yeah you know well you for marvel and dc it's great but in the end it's work you mm-hmm. know here it's less like work so. that's a good way to put it i think and you know another question to follow this up and this is kind of for both of you at this point is you know you know you came from being you know the guy marvel where dc would tell you hey go write this hey go draw this now you guys are sort of the ones running the ship at you know some point you know what's that like i guess turning from sort of a employee perspective to sort of a uh you know we're running this thing kind of a perspective i take out all my frustrations and angers on the people below me now so you <laughs> know I turn around yeah revenge no just kidding um I don't know. Look at Keith's talk about that. Well, I think to backtrack on one thing, um, it's not that I, I don't care per se about what an artist might do in a book. It's that uh, you develop uh, a trust with an artist. So I've worked with Tom enough, and I respect his talent and his choices enough that I trust him to make the right choice when he's bringing a script to life. You know, with my Daybreak artist, uh, Stefan Tashev, uh, we've worked together now, you know, for a couple hundred pages of work. Uh, I'm very hands-off with him also because I trust the choices he's going to make. I know he's going to interpret the script. It'll be different from what I imagine, but, you know, he's going to do a good job of bringing the story to life in his own way. But if it's an artist that I don't have him worked with yet or, or what have you, then I'm a little more hands-on. Mm-hmm. But if it's someone that, that I trust and they know what they're doing, uh, I think that extra creative freedom, it goes a long way uh, just to giving, giving people enthusiasm for a job. It takes a long time to draw a comic book, and I think the less headaches you can give somebody as they're doing the work, the better. I don't want to you know, deflate anybody's uh, balloon as they're, they're working on a project. I want it to be fun. I want them to engage in it and not hate the job. Yeah, you know, and as far as what it's like to be like in charge now, um, there's there's pros and cons, because if there's a mistake made, it's probably uh, my fault. Um, so uh, you know, it's been a learning curve for sure, um, but it's also the freedom that comes with it, um, after being told what to do for so many years, and now being able to you know chart our own course, you know, in, in this small way. It's really exhilarating, and it makes me really uh, love making comic books again. You know, it feels like less of a job and, and really more of a uh, of a choice or a vocation or a passion again. Yeah, you know, where that that love is gets kind of ground out of you over the over the decades of doing this. Like, I'm in my thirtieth year now in this dumb business, um, and I've I've literally seen it all at this point, and I've been treated horribly. I've been treated well. Uh, and it's just nice to do my own thing at this point, and hopefully it is for the rest of the guys too. Yeah. And I think our experience, you know, I mean, just between Keith and I, I mean, that's almost six decades of experience. And, you know, just that knowledge that, you know, I, I think it helps us grow new pain because we see a lot of indie publishers come and go, but, you know, they don't really have the experience, not just experience of time, but experience working with the big two. And knowing yeah. what they desire, the the standards they need, the the drama and the headaches that go with it. So we kind of, you know, hopefully we apply that to new pain and and make keep it going and help it grow and avoid the pitfalls that have um, sunk other small publishers. Yeah, and I think that that's a great actual segue into my next question, which was going to be, as people like you guys and for Rob, you can absolutely chime in on this as well. Uh, you know, everybody now wants to start, you know, their own comic book, wants to make their own comic book. Kickstarter's huge. You know, what, as, you know, people who run an indie publishing company, sort of what, what's your what's your advice? You know, what would you tell people to do if they're going to try and produce and release a successful comic book? I would say don't do it. 
<laughs> I don't want the competition. I, yeah. I don't want to just go and do something else. Make a time. movie instead. Well, you hear, make yeah. a movie instead. Start a TikTok yeah. account. Yeah, do a, do a TikTok before it gets banned. Yeah. Before it gets banned, you, you only got limited time, so you got to be quicker on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> you heard it here first, though. Keith... Uh, Keith does not support independent no, publishers. No, we don't, I don't want you around. You know, <laughs> get out of my business. Less yeah. competition for us, the better. So don't, don't do it. Don't. Well, uh, I mean, Rob, uh, you, you know, back to your story, yeah. you started small, grew up, you know, grew, yeah. not only grew up, but also into the business. You know, what would you, what would you say? Um, I think uh, doing it at a pace that you can manage and having fun, like he's saying, like, People eventually quit having fun doing something that, that got them excited and they could use their imagination to be creative. Um, Keith let me write a story, so I'm looking forward to that. We got an artist <laughs> on board, so I, we'll see how my my uh, work as a uh, writer uh, works out because that was, yeah, just a lot of fun just to do the writing part of it. Yeah. Um, so I'd say, you know, if you have your expectations manageable and you're doing it for fun, and then if it turns into something, uh, that's that's better than, you know, putting all your chips in and and praying and uh, it, wrecking your uh, financial future. You know, <laughs> go, go at a pace where you can afford. You know. Yeah, I think Tommy, going back to the question of you know what what advice you would give these days for people who want to do their own comic or Kickstarter, I think it goes back to basically no one is going to support you or buy your product if they don't know who you are. So I always emphasize, you know, really as much of a, a pain as social media is because it's like a second job to a lot of us. And as creatives, it, it almost is kind of necessary to have a social media presence because in this day and age, um, you know, like you're your own manager. No one's going to promote you except for you. No one's going to be better at promoting you than yourself and your work. And if no one knows who you exist, like who's going to pay you, you know, and if you don't put in the work that way and then you start to get disgruntled because, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I should be getting more work or why aren't people like hiring me for stuff? It's, you know, you, you got to really shove your work in their faces and, and do it on social media. Nowadays, there's no excuse to do it because, you know, you have free platforms to do it. Um, back in the day, the goal was to work for the big two. Like that was the end goal. And nowadays, the game has changed so much. Now I say, if you can break in the big two, do it. Now leverage that. Build credentials there. Leverage your, your audience there into your own IP. Like, that's the name of the game now. Um, because I've, I've been saying it, you know, like, uh, creator-owned is the future, or it's now. And, um, you know, it, Keith and I are lucky enough to, to work in an era where that was really helping us you know, before we started doing our own creator own stuff, you know, our catalog and credentials of the titles, the many titles that we've done. I mean, really without that, it would be so much more difficult. I don't even know we could even be successful. So um, really work on your social media and be consistent at it too. You know, don't just like post like, you know, once a week and then like skip it, you know, another week, try to be as consistent. I mean, I could be better at this because, you know, I've fallen off the wagon too sometimes. But, um, I mean, I don't even know what the algorithm is these days because it seems to change, but, you know, you want to keep that algorithm working in your favor. And it seems to me that consistency is still the best way to do it. Yeah. Keith, anything to add? No. No? All right. Well, all right. Well, well Keith's just going to sort of sit there looking pretty on the camera. <laughs> gonna make going to make this look a little more appetizing. But, uh He's the thumbnail. He's the thumbnail. He's just a giant <laughs> close-up of Keith's face. Uh, but that's great advice from Tom. I hope you guys out there are taking some notes. Uh, you know, I guess let's. What's next for New Pain? You know, what 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 kind what kind of details can you share? What's coming up from you guys? What do you got? I, uh, Keith's got a pretty good uh, idea of what he wants to do this year. Well, I think our next project is slated to be our first sketchbook edition. We're going to put out a sketchbook for uh, an artist named Keith Williams, who did a ton of work for Marvel in the 80s and 90s. Um, he's a good friend of New Pain, and we're going to try to, you know, it's a different kind of product for us. We'll see if there's any kind of market for it. 
And if there is, I'd love to do sketchbook editions for a lot of our industry friends, you know, collect some of their personal sketches and their, their comic work. Um, <clears throat> what else do we have coming up? Let me think. We have uh, Jump number two coming up. We have a new book called Punch number one. The first issue of that coming up. We've got the official uh, handbook of the New Pain Universe that we started working on just this past week. Uh, we'll be doing a trade paperback of Daybreak, which is now all four issues are complete. And uh, there was one more thing I can't think of right now. Oh, uh, and Tom has a book, um, which is, uh, I don't want to say too much about it because the the concept is actually so great that we don't want to give that it you don't want to give it away. But it's uh, when he when we will be another switch book too eventually. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that too. But Tom has a, a his own idea, his own comic that I can't wait for him to make because it's one of those ideas. It's such a no brainer. Like, how did nobody think of this yet? And um, like, we can't tell you what it is because someone will steal it before he gets to do it. <laughs> but it's amazing, and I think it's going to blow some minds. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Rob, how about you, man? Yeah, well, I oh, 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 I, oh I wrote this story, uh, and uh, a new artist, uh, Brian Double D, is uh, working on it, and uh, it's it connected to the Switch universe. Um, so yeah, uh, Grease Trap, it's kind of a an origin story. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to see how that turns out. It turns out Rob's a really good writer too. Like, who knew? Oh man, I got <laughs> who knew? Sell myself less <laughs> short. Slightly yeah. shorter. Rob's the most modest creator of our uh, group. Um, but going back on what Keith said, I agree. I don't want to say too much about it, but let's just say if you guys are really hardcore paniacs and you have an eagle eye, you can get a hint of what Keith was hinting at in some of our marketing images. Oh, interesting. Ooh. So, take a look. Hmm. Take a look. But that's all I'll say. No, nothing about the story. I mean, we, we kind of, I mean, you know, Rob's been pretty modest over here, guys, but let's not forget that Tom almost won a spelling bee. <laughs> right? I mean, we got competition Not just one. I mean, I was a placing away from the state. A placing away. I mean. And if I won the state, I would have gone to the National Scripps Howard Spelling Bee. You might have you be here, Rob. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. it might be over for you. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't in the spelling bee, and I was, we went to school. You know, so. I mean, yeah. You almost it's embarrassing, man. <laughs> it, is, it is for you. Yeah. Um, well, I'm basically the king of District 191, Egan Burnsville Savage. So the, the king. They got yeah. they got your face plastered yeah. in a large display case. You know, yeah. tribute to Tom. Yeah, is what it's called yeah. up there in the in the English classes section. <laughs> the, yep. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining me today. You know, New Paint. If you haven't checked them out, we'll you know we'll have a link. To some of their videos we'll have a link to their social media page in, in the description so you guys can check them out further uh thank you all for coming out today being on this podcast thank you for and having uh, us. i'm sure we'll talk to you all at some point in the future i know we will for sure thanks tommy yeah. have a good one thank you well there you have it new pain new pain i hope uh people really want to dive into some of their characters and uh well i tell you what they um they're doing great work right now. So if you don't, if you if you get a chance to support them, you know you can you can contact them and, and get behind their campaigns that they do. Get on board with their newsletter. Um, yeah, and, and like I said, this is all great stuff for you guys to get involved. In. It's all at the ground level, and uh, they're going to be starting to hit the show circuit here this year and start really pumping out their stuff. Um, so yeah, right now they're 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 new. They're up and coming. And they have veterans in the industry that know what they're doing, so you know the stories are going to be well written. Mm -hmm. And the artists that they have, they have an incredible team of artists. Yep. I mean, Brian Double D, Rob Miller, Tom Nguyen. I mean, right. come on. The, and Keith Champagne's an artist, too, as well as a great writer. Mm -hmm. And then Curry's a great writer. Yep, James yeah. Curry. And James Curry, yeah. I mean, I mean, come on now. That Hastings was a good story. So, I mean, come on. If, uh, if you get a chance to support it, and also if you like what you see, please subscribe to... Uh, to our channel if you like what you see and smash the like button make sure you subscribe we'd love to have your support on our on our weekly show so um tommy tommy what else do we have uh coming out anything we need to add before we go i think that's it i think that's a wrap everybody we are going to have some announcements next week so make sure you stay tuned and with that we bid you a great week everybody mm -hmm.